Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam I.B. began G. Jim, according to commentary for the media streets of which the much awaited, a highly revered, must be shared, dump cap of the month award show. Um, going to be doing a lot of this show on screen share as I am not still uh, in the studio. But I thought this would be interesting because we have we had a computer crash earlier, so I don't have a lot of dumby stories. Fortunately, the stories I have are absolute morons, such as Exhibit A. That's right. What I'm playing for you, let me turn the volume down, is an idiot. And this idiot has, as you will see, managed to try and set the American flag on fire during the protest. And have set themselves instead on fire. Now, the, the, the most amazing part of this is that this isn't the first time that we've covered. Look at this. That's hilarious. This isn't the first time that we've covered some bonehead doing this. Um, what else is there to be said? He sat himself on fire trying to light the American flag on fire. Um, oh, that's not where that was supposed to go. That was not the screen share that I had intended. Um, it goes to show you right off the right, right off the rip where we're going to go here on the dumb cap. So let me go back to it. That did not that did not render for you, those of you that wanted to see it. So we will go back to it. The uh, the genius here that manages to set himself on fire. Uh, oh, let's see. Look at that. When, whenever you need something to work live, it never does. Pure genius in action, right here, friends. All right, replay on our dumb cap of the month show, and. Uh, if, you've, if it's the first time you've ever tuned into the show, we do this once a month. We've mailed dunce caps to the FBI. We've mailed them to the White House. We've mailed dunce caps a little bit of everywhere. And now, if I had an idea who this genius was, as a matter of fact, I'm telling you, I would definitely send him a dunce cap. And there's a misconception that there's people being arrested for setting the flag on fire when it's their right to do so. You do have a right to do it. You don't have a right to set a fire in the middle of a street. That's what you don't have the right to do, because you're going to end up possibly setting yourself or other people on fire. And I've seen three or four stories of this this year. Now, here it is. Graphic content, viewer discretion advised, replay, since it didn't work the first time. Yes. There he comes. Here comes our dumdy, and there he is. Yep. Now, he's wearing the American flag that he's trying to set on fire. Judging by the way it went up, it looks like it was soaked in something. What did he think wearing an American flag skirt into the middle of a raging fire in the middle of a street was going to do? And that's where it's really hard to feel sorry for these people. Uh, next, we're going to get into something that has a little bit to do with white privilege. And white privilege is so funny. White privilege is why I don't have any electricity. And I'm talking to you from borrowed electricity from the duplex that I live in. Because I'm, I'm white and so very privileged. Look at this. That is somebody with a kid in a slavery noose. Now, I don't have kids. And the way my wife smokes, I never will. But... If you put my kid in a slavery noose, unless he is in a play, everybody at that school is going to remember my name. And this almost won the dunce cap of the month. Uh, the winner is actually next. This almost won. Um, new reparations website asks whites to pay black people's rent to relieve their guilt. Now, I think it's important to point out here that only 1% to 5% of whites ever owned slaves. I think most of you don't know that. The vast majority of whites did not own slaves. I bet you didn't know that there were very few rich blacks during the slave days. They were emancipated and... Uh, in some instances, I believe one was a doctor. Now, I don't know if this doctor did, but there were very few black uh, emancipated rich people, and they owned slaves. Blacks that were the elites of Africa would gather up the average black man and sell him to slavery to the U.S. and the West and other places. In other words, 
slavery is a human sin, not a racial sin. However, this has been going on as if you and I, somehow average white dude, were owning slaves back in this time. My family, if they were even in the country, and there is some question as to if they are, I know I have not ancestry.com to myself. My grandfather's last name was Briny. So they were either starving in, um, in, in, in Ireland, uh, the, the, the last of the Pawpaw famine, or my dad's side, my grandmother was half Mexican. So probably weren't in the country owning white slaves. And that's the same with so many people listening to this. There's no ties to it at all. Uh, the equivalent to the Rockefellers, the Clintons, the elites, that's who owned slaves back in slave days, not your average white person. Even if they were immoral enough to want to, they couldn't have afforded it. Um, but anyway, listen to this. We're doing the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, and this is about as stupid as anything you're ever going to see. A new reparations website asks whites, asks white people, excuse me, to pay back people's rent and give them money to relieve their white guilt. Now, if you're listening to this and you have white guilt, let me tell you, there's something wrong with you. This is something that is this is something that is doled out to try to create friction among people, where the guilty party might not even be guilty, based on race to keep us all fighting each other. The website, started by Seattle-based conceptual artist Natasha Marin, suggests a number of ways in which white people can atone for the fact that 1.4... Okay, I was close. 1.4% of white people owned slaves in the United States over 150 years ago. Did you hear that? 1.4%. And they were probably the same white people that white people like me don't like today. Now, this is examples of the site's about page. Now, the people who started this site, mind you, were absolute geniuses. Uh, scum, but geniuses. Because they knew that there'd be people dumb enough to actually do this. Um, POC 3, I need groceries. White person 3, I'll get them for you. PM me and I'll send an Amazon Fresh or Safeway delivery. You just pick out what you want. I have a $200 limit. Sure, because my family didn't own slaves and I felt badly about it because somebody's family owned slaves. And since their family was in the same country as mine, I guess I should be to blame. Just a thought, friends. Uh, four, I'm too upset to make dinner. I live in Seattle. White person, number four. Come over to my house for dinner and bring a friend if you like. PM me and I'll send the address so I can order delivery for you. What kind of food do you like? People are really doing this. Meanwhile, I, I don't have electricity in my house. And there's people doing this. Um, I want to scream and cuss at someone. White person six. I volunteer as tribute. How do we set this up? Do, do you get that? White people are signing themselves up, encouraged to sign themselves up so that black people can scream at them. No, I wouldn't feel any better if it was white person screaming at them. This, this is a rabbit hole of utter stupidity is what this is. Um, seven, I want to escape this cruel world in a specific video game, but I can't afford it to stream it right now. This is not a crisis. I just don't trust people easily, and I want to see how it works. White person. Thank you for giving me the chance to do something concrete and relatively easy. I was quietly hating myself for doing nothing. The site is encouraging you, Whitey, to hate yourself for the sins that you did not commit and very likely, you have a 1.4% chance that anybody in your damn family ever committed it. And yet you're supposed to buy a video game for somebody so that they can play it and make up for your white guilt. Because I guess for whatever reason, you're supposed to believe that they're not responsible for 
buying the damn game and deciding if they like it themselves. Um, I mean, when you're too lazy to hack, let's be real. When you're too lazy to know how to use BitTorrent, you have reached a whole new level of lazy. And the color of your skin likely has nothing to do with it. Numerous white people beset with self-loathing have already offered a number of goods and services, including a free use of a car. Come use my car. Please don't hit anybody. You might not have insurance. That's okay. I'll pay for it. House cleaning, massages, catharsis, and straight up cold hard cash. It goes on, black people have posted messages on the site with requests for free laptops, <laughs> a Kindle ebook reader, and recording studio access, where they can likely record music that calls themselves nigga, which is far more offensive than anything a white person would normally call a black person. But of course, that's just common sense. Can't have, you cannot have common sense on the dunce cap of the month show. I should know better. Um, I want my project fully funded, or at least my phone paid for, from here until December, so that I can stay in Borkin, writing about America K Khan colonialism. Now this person wants reparations from white people, so they can write about how much they hate white people. And <laughs> there's people donating to it. Yes, let me help you of your hatred of me. I'll pay for it. Someone else asks for recording on studio time, so that they can do an album entitled White Boys to vent their frustration on white boys. I'm too poor to own a space or rent right now. I record everything in my room and it's often too loud for my family. My dream is to own and run my own recording studio. And of course, that is Whitey's fault that you don't have it. Let me tell you a secret. I'm pretty white. I was recording in my house on a computer, and oftentimes it was too loud for family and friends. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm doing the show right now in my duplex that I live in. And um, when you would do overdubs, for those of you that don't know, let's say there's a there's a, a song playing and the chorus has something here. And then you'll go back and you'll overdub that so that it's, here. so that, that the, the last word hits double hard. Look up obituary. They do it all the time. Um, or if you're doing rap, if you listen to Eminem, a lot of times he'll have himself recorded as a separate track behind his main rap, and it, it fixes your stress point words. Uh, many rappers use this technique. Um, my neighbor had to have thought the world was ending because let's say i record the song one night the vocals and then i go to bed the next day i decide to do my overdubs so it's dead quiet in the house it sounds like this and then she had to have wondered what the hell um that's 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 how music got done okay um i literally Lucked in to Night Stalker Records. They were buying a car from a mutual acquaintance of ours. And the record label purchased the studio that my brother and I now have. It's actually my brother's studio. And it was purchased to us by the label on the condition that the entire label can record there at will without cost. None of that story has anything to do with color, did it? I'm just saying. What I was I, I was privileged enough that somebody bought a car off a mutual friend. No, I didn't get the record deal because I was white. I got the record deal because I was lucky. Um, does that mean that I, I, I'm not talented enough for the record deal? No, but I'm not someone that believes that talent equates success. That's not true at all. More than anything, it's just a matter of being lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time. And again, um, long-time listeners to the show know, um, I currently don't have any electricity in my house. I'm using my neighbor's electricity because I had a business deal go bad and someone stole the entire $1,300 worth of electricity they racked up. Yes, I have silver and gold. No, I'm not cashing it to pay an electric bill. Um, the, none of th these things happen to everyone. 
it's not color. It's just a matter of I was unlucky enough to have someone steal a lot of money off me, and I'm not willing to cash the gold that I was responsible enough to buy for it. Um, I was lucky enough that the gentleman who bought the uh, car, his name is Link, liked underground music. Because if he could have bought that car and he was a big country music fan, he wouldn't have signed me. Okay, But it didn't have anything to do with color. It didn't have anything to do with race. That's what these people aren't understanding. I know I've gone a bit long on that analogy, but that's why you tune in. So before you say it, this site is not a joke, despite the fact that it's absolutely hilarious. Every, look how they type that. It's. Oops, typo. Every, I, I, I'm writing now for a living quite frequently, so I notice these things. Every offer or request on the website links to the individual's personal Facebook profile. Myron says the website is a way for white people to extricate themselves from the guilt that they are mired in. Yeah, because, you know, I inherited so much money from my family that owned the cotton uh, plantations that, uh, that uh, abused people. Yeah, with a last name like DeGangi, I'm sure my family was owning cotton mills. I, I, uh, yeah, that's likely. Oh, mired in abuse you gotta love that but it but it does not in no way pardon for years of systemic abuse so supposedly uh he's talking about the systemic abuse that leads to figures like white people being 27 more times likely to be violently attacked by black people than vice versa um also i think it's interesting even after you give the money you still should feel as guilty as you did before that's that's hilarious Marin asserts that the fight for wind scale government sanctioned reparations program is totally legitimate. Yeah, of course it is. And should continue outside the confines of their website. Never mind, they don't look up and say, it's really easy. You look up who owed plantations that were using slaves 150 years ago. Those families. Well, I don't personally think those families owe anything because it wasn't them that did it. It was their family. But if you are someone that does believe that, you could at least take up the time to make sure that the people that you're saying had done this to your family, their families, were at least part of it. Call it a hunch. And again, that's, I just opened up a can of worms there because I don't think these people owe either. But if you do believe that way, at least pick the right target. There is no indication on whether the website will spot a copycat um, for white people upset about the Barbary slave trade for a far longer and more brutal period of slavery under which both blacks and whites were brutally oppressed by Arabs. Yes, that is true. Blacks and whites were slaves under Arabs, and there were far many more of them. It went on for far longer and far more died. Uh, this fat moose on the screen is uh, somebody um, from Black Lives Matter, Ashley uh, Shackleford. And she says that uh, white people should give her money because she is a fat black bitch. Well, flat, fat black bitch, you have made it and your incredibly homely self onto the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. So congratulations. Friends, Dunce Cap of the Month is brought to you by Sticker Junkie, and if for any reason you have not gone to Sticker Junkie, what are you doing? You mean you've watched this show all this time, and you have not gone to Sticker Junkie? Make sure you do, and I'll check out. Tell them you heard about it from the correct views. Friends, you know what that takes us to, right? You know, you know what it is, right? The Dunce Cap of the Month! Oh, yes. There's our Dundee music. Oh, it feels good, doesn't it? Good for the soul. It's kind of like a round of no phone. All right. Um, this is great. This is how you and I, Joe Taxpayer, lose $475,000. This is from Zero Hedge. Tyler Durden writes, again, I love the name. U.S. government pays $475,000 for illegally searching a woman's vagina. Uh, friends, even that very graphic description <coughs> is considerably tame when compared to what actually happened. This woman, for all intents and purposes, was molested. 
There's no other way to put it. She was molested, damn near bankrupt, subjected to um, procedures that may not have even been safe, almost forced to pay for it herself, and humiliated, literally humiliated. We'll get into it here. I do want to say before we start, it's important to point out that x-rays need to be uh, monitored. If you are, for instance, somebody like my friend Bubba, who has gone through a lot of x-rays because he destroyed his hip and his leg, he is somebody that would most likely want to avoid future x-rays, at least for a little bit of time. You can overdo them. Uh, I know people say, I got hundreds of x-rays and I'm fine. Yes. But each one is a cumulative effect. It gets worse each time. So they should only be done when a doctor says that they need to be. I've had some for my teeth. And I had some when I thought I had vertigo a couple of years ago. And I have stayed largely away from them ever since, including the last time that I injured my hand. Um, not a good idea, friends. But anyway, that's important to know before we get into this. Listen to this abuse. So it comes cap of the month. Have you lost that loving feeling? And so the United States federal government might just be able to help with that. Before you swipe right on Tinder or update your eHarmony account, consider instead just taking a trip out of the country. Because on your way back home into the land of the free, U.S. Customs and Borders Protection will have agents standing by ready with heaps of government stimulus. It happened to Jane Doe, whose name has been withheld to protect what little dignity remains, a 54-year-old U.S. citizen who had recently been on a trip to Mexico. As she was returning home via the Cordova Bridge border crossing El Paso, Texas, she was randomly selected, it says, for extra special screening and escorted to a private area. I've been there. It's not fun. They don't tell you anything, and they don't say why. This is uh, the author saying this. They act very aggressively, and they start barking orders at you as if you've already uh, are a prison inmate. Um, quite frequently, they make you sit there for hours. Um, unfortunately for the author, he says, Tyler Durden, nothing particularly sinister happened to him. Well, according to published files, this poor woman was frisked, ordered to squat so that a, dog, a drug-sniffing dog could check out her nether regions. Apparently, the dog liked what he smelled. It must have been Clinton. That must have been the dog's name, just a guess. Because Miss Doe was then taken to yet another room in order to pull down her pants and crouch. This is the government. Now, anybody know what the Fourth Amendment is? The, you are protected against illegal searches and seizures. Would this not be an illegal search and seizure, friends? At that point, an agent from the Customs and Border Protection inspected her anus with a flashlight. That would be her booty for you Usher fans. She was then ordered to lean backwards in a crouched position, after which another field agent inserted a speculum into her vagina to search for drugs. This is stranger than my porn history, friends. Another agent then parted Miss Doe's vulva with her hand, that'd be her lips for you, the view uh, who don't know, pressed her fingers into Miss Joe's vagina and visually examined her genitalia with a flashlight. Now, my wife, Christelle, she's getting more and more turned on as this goes. They then took her to the hospital for a further six hours of involuntary testing. So you've gone to Mexico. Your vacation is over. Normally, you are utterly exhausted after your vacation. I know I was when I got back from the Bahamas. And six hours of abuse testing because a dog got triggered by the smell of your ass. <sighs> These tests included forcing her to have a bowel movement as they watched. X-rays, that's radiation. CT scans, that's very strong magnetic radiation. And more. Now, I know what you're thinking. They probably found a treasure trove of coke and meth, right? No, nothing. They found nothing shoved deep in her womanhood. She was brutally probed against her will for hours and hours without judicial, judicial oversight, due process, or even reasonable suspicion, and they found nothing. And here's the most disgusting part. It goes into this. She was released without charge, but they had a little caveat for her. 
they told her that if she signed a consent form retroactively, that means like going back in time and pretending that she had said it was okay when she hadn't, retroactively signing her permission to be abused and violated, that the government would pay for the test and medical expenses. But if she didn't sign the consent form, she'd have to pay for them herself. Um, she refused to sign, and now the United States government sent her a bill for five grand, basically demanding that she pay for her own sexual assault. Uh, she said she felt like a rape victim, and she sued. Guess what? She won. She, Miss Doe gets $475,000. But the, uh, the, the settlement says that it sh the government, uh, the settlement says it should not be taken as an admission of liability or fault. No, no, not at all. It must have been Jane Doe's fault. Um, like the classic rape story it says from the 50s, blame the victim. So I guess, I guess now the border agents are free to molest and rape you at well. I'm going to go ahead and call this up ever so quickly here. This is the actual award that I am sending to them. Am I, what, you're new to the show. You say, what? What do you mean sending? I am sending this to the government is exactly what I'm saying. I'm sending this to the border agent. There is a guy getting a nice handful of what looks like a very nice ass. I must say, that's a, that looks like it was fun to film. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Again, I'm a pervert. I'm not a rapist. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes without hesitation to the disgusting workers at the U.S. Customs and Border Protections for what was basically the sexual attack of an American citizen. With utter disregard of the Fourth Amendment, you swine decided to use nothing more than the supposed alert from a dog to conduct an anal inspection on an innocent 54-year-old Jane Doe. Much like any rapist, you also violated her vaginal area and caused great discomfort and lack of dignity. Not yet content to have eviscerated the rights of Jane Doe, you vile buzzards then further humiliated her by watching her as she took a bowel movement, which according to my Constitution affords you no such right, all while the victim proclaimed innocence. Moving on with the assault, I wrote, you then took it upon yourself to decide what radiation exposure was in order. This you did with no knowledge of the woman's previous history or exposure to radiation. This matters since too many X-ray and CAT scans can be dangerous. They did not deter you how this did not deter you, however, and when the woman was found to have been clean, the assault went on still, even after six hours. You then punish Jane Doe's dignity further by attempting to manipul manipulate her into signing a post consent form, another ambiguous piece of non speak, I wrote that would make it appear as if Jane Doe has been a willing party to what amounted to a near rape and molestation. If not, you threaten her with the medical bills that you incurred for her. Then you rightfully lost in court and the taxpayers now lose $475,000. For this, you win the dunce cap of the month award. Way to go, heathens. And uh, that is exactly what I, I swear to you I am sending to the border uh, the border agents. And I also made them their dunce cap. There you go. It says dunce. Now, if you look there, there is a new person. And I have the, uh, the boobies, if you will, and the vagina X'd out. There is uh, a no grope, the very unhappy woman with, of course, the infamous blue gloves uh, groping the ta-ta area. And uh, I love border crossings. Reach over and grab them. I am sending this to the uh, the border. And uh, that Christelle is loving it. Uh, she's doing unmentionables to herself off camera. And you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. You can donate to the show at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. You can also donate at Patreon, and the uh, it's in the description link if you'd like to do that. Hit share, and thanks for watching, friends. It's been the Dunce Cap of the Month. Save the tatas.